Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. If you are happy to be in the presence of God this morning, can we shout hallelujah? Today is the last Sunday in year 2014. And if you are happy to be a living soul, can you be on your feet? And say thank you, Jesus, in seven times. One to go. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I go along our lag bar, along our noa, along all your fair, or battle for the party at bar, along to Dawa Silati, Sunday at Coco, City, the Sunday to Bay. I sure love our battery pay, oh, ye quadra. I go Gafu and Noon, Reluia, and Yewa, along and Miao, will you do a go up by a walk? Phone go to Jay, you know, doing in my Yewa, phone go to Jay, or Nori Jore, you know, I ye, Nicoco, no, I ye, B, one, no, I ye, Dileo, no, I ye, John, no, I am more, along our noon, I go up by a walk. Nino Sunday school, along and me more by you are. So if you your joy, you are losing power. Just so she will go up by a walk. I told you, I call no new rule. You don't call Jesus, you are my bow, I love it. Oh, you are bad, right? Quick, I knew you are going to say, 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 I knew you are going we go back to our lesson 605. I believe this morning that the Lord in his mercy will open our eyes the more see and it will, it's going to transform our life this morning once again in the name of Jesus. Lesson 605. Uh, Mystery of the Gospel Revealed. Mystery of the Gospel Revealed. From English class. Can someone read the memory verse for us? English class. My mommy is raising her hand up there. Hallelujah. But God has revealed them to, unto us through by His Spirit. For the Spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. Praise but God. God From the Yoruba class. Lati Yarai Keko Yoruba. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Suba, Allah won't see one by a funwa, ne pay me. Nitori emi lo nwa di o ngbogbo nipa ohun ijile Olorun 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10 I want a fast reader Mo fe ki eni to le yara kawe Da o read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 Ti o ka iwe Corinthians kini ori keji From verse 6 to 16 Lati ese ke fa si ese ke ni dini ogun A fast reader Eni to le yara kawe God in mystery, even the hidden wisdom which is God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of these prince of this world knew, for he had known it, they would have they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eyes has not seen, nor the hair have heard, neither have he entered into the heart of man the things which the Lord has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed the, them unto us by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the, the, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirits of man, which is, in, excuse me, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of 
which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the word, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spirit things, spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know, know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For his spirit searcheth all things, yea, the dim things of God. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The Lord will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. And I pray after today's Sunday school, our relationship will be better with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Let's look at our pamphlet. Discovering the mystery of the gospel through the spirit. The message of Christ's crucifixion embodied the wisdom of God. This message was vain before Christ came. The cross was ordained of God before the world and had been a ministry, mystery relatively hidden from the Old Testament prophet. This fact, notwithstanding, it was announced by the prophet and prefigured in the law. It has been hidden. The prophet prophesied about it. But they didn't understand what they were prophesying. They didn't know that the Gentiles should be the co heirs with also the Jews. Which I and you, we are from Gentile world. It was that provision that you and I received. Which the Old Testament prophet did not understand. But the Lord in his mercy has planned for everybody. It's not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. He has planned for everybody. Let's thank God for the plan he has for you. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Last week he said something. He said what eyes have not seen. What yes have not heard. What has not entered into the heart of men. This is what God has prepared for them that love him. In verse 10, say, but it has revealed it unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. And I said, how useful you are going to be in the hand of God depends on your love for him. The extent you are going to manifest God depends on your love for God. When you love God, you will fear him. When you love God, you obey his commandments. When you love God, you draw closer to him than never than before. When you love God, it will be the first thing in your life. 
It will be the first thing in your life. Is God the first thing in our life? Have we taken the things of the world to be the first thing we are pursuing after? Is God the first priority in your life? Let's answer that question. Apostle Paul asserted that this hidden secret is made plain and revealed to the Spirit of God to the prophet and the apostles. According to Isaiah 61, the, picture, the Gentiles are pictured as being the servant and Israel as the prince of God. That is according to the Old Testament. Why it is true that the Gentiles were promised blessing in the future millennial kingdom. They are never given equality with the Jews in the Old Testament. That was in the Old Testament. This equality is the point of the mystery discovered by the apostles through God's Spirit in the New Testament dispensation. That is why the Jews find it difficult to believe that the Gentiles can also receive salvation. If any Gentiles want to give their life to Christ, they believe that they should pass through circumcision before they receive salvation. But if the plan of God for the Gentiles he has another plan. That is a mystery that has been hidden for years. That through the only prophet and the apostle, it was revealed. But there is something I want us to emphasize here. In Ephesians chapter 3, 5 and 6. It's not just for mere prophets and apostles. That the prophet they were so holy. Only apostles and prophets. The, the mystery was revealed to only apostles and prophets. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. What are the components of this mystery? That the Gentiles should be the fellow heirs with the Jews. Thus, every promise of internal inheritance will apply equally to both the Gentiles and the Jews. The promise is for both the Gentiles and the Jews. The promise of internal salvation. The promise of reigning with Christ. It's not only for the Jews, but it's also for the Gentiles. That the Gentiles should be the same body with the Jews. The head of the body is Christ. The Jews and the Gentiles are part of the same body. That we should, the Gentiles also should be partaker of the promises in the gospel. Promises of forgiveness. Promises of joy. Promises of Holy Spirit. Promises of prosperity. Promises of healings. Promises of miracles. 
It's also made for the Gentiles. It's not for the Jews only. But it's both for the Jews and the Gentiles that have Christ. The middle wall of partition between the Jews and the Gentiles is removed. When Jesus Christ died, the scripture says, and the veil and the temple, the veil of the temple was torn. The vein, the partition between the Gentiles and the Jews has been torn away. There is no middle war between Jews and the Gentiles again. Whatever the Jews are receiving from God, the Gentiles can also be the partaker. There is no difference. And we are the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles. Whatever thing that is promised in the scriptures is also meant for us. It's for us also. There is no difference between the Jews and the Gentiles again. We are of the same body. We have the same party. We only have only one head. And that is Jesus Christ. Ah, the Lord will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. To see yourself that we are the most fortunate person on earth. As a Christian, we are the most fortunate person on earth. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Say, we are raised together and we sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are raised with him. We have been seated with him. We are already dwelling in him. Can you see, for Christ to dwell in us is a great thing. If you are born again, you don't see yourself as a cockroach. You are no more cockroach. You are no more one because there is a greater person living inside of you. And that is our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The signing God's mind, the saint's privilege. Designing God's mind, the saint privilege. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as a Christian. And we can know the mind of Christ through the Holy Spirit that is given to us. According to Ephesians chapter 3, starting from verse 17, said, He has granted unto us according to the riches of His glory that we might be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. We, as a Christian, the day you gave your life to Christ, your spirit man is regenerated. And inside your inner man, there is a personality dwelling there. And that is the person of the Holy Spirit. And it is that Holy Spirit that is strengthening your inner man. As you draw closer to the Holy Spirit, your inner man will be strengthened. There is nothing the inner man can do without the Holy Spirit being strengthened. That is why in first in Second Corinthians chapter four, in verse seventeen, say we have these treasures in an empty vessel. That the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. 
Holy Spirit is in us, is present in the inner man. According to that Ephesians chapter, he said, being strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. And when you see it, the Holy Spirit is the only hope of Christians. When you have him, when you draw closer to him, when you take him as your personal friends, let me tell you, there is no any limit for you. He will reveal things you don't know. He will tell you many things. I have many testimonies about my life. Because when you draw closer to the Holy Spirit, I remember an instant that I was just praying one day and he opened my eyes and I saw that they've already buried someone and I was crying I said God in that revelation that this person that has already been buried must wake up I continue to pray when I woke up and I learned from a man of God see, when a man when God shows you a vision and you are praying you must pray through I prayed until I pray through when I pray through I had inner witness and I stood up. I didn't know that it was my junior sister that should die. That same day just happened. My mommy was running the task. Where I sat, I was just sitting. I said, I said, ah, oh, sorry. And I said, ah, I said, mommy, I have seen it. But I have prayed through. But thank God for her. She's alive today. She's married and she has married a pastor. And I was happy that let's say she has gone. There is no hope again for her. But then she has not given her life to Christ. When you draw closer to the Holy Spirit, the mistress is going to reveal to you. I have many instances like my dad, what happens to my dad, this and that and that, and people outside. The secret is how is your relationship with only hope we have, and that is the person of the Holy Spirit. That is the only person. You know, let me tell you, pastor, prophet, or this is not our hope. Oh. God has deposited something in us that uh, should be leading us. You are not meant to be led by any personality. You are meant to be led by the person that is in within, and that is the Holy Spirit. According to, according to Hebrews chapter 1, as it has been said in a sundry, in the Old Testament, you can open it, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, said they were led by prophets and the apostles. But in this our time, in this our present age, we are led by a son. Um, you can read it. We, we are not reading it. I'm just paraphrasing it. But we can read it on our own. In this our present age, <inaudible> the Holy Spirit is our hope. <inaudible> what prophet did not know, Holy Spirit will reveal to you. <inaudible> what <inaudible> apostle did not know, what pastor did not know, what your Sunday school teacher did not know, Holy Spirit will reveal to you. He <inaudible> can direct you to hear, go and meet my son, go and meet me, and let him this. But our leader, 
our leader, our director, our director is the person of the Holy Spirit. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. According to that Ephesians chapter 10, starting from verse 8, say that Christ will dwell in your heart by faith. Look up when Holy Spirit is strengthening you. When you allow the Holy Spirit to express Himself through you. One, He will allow the He will allow Christ to dwell in you by faith. Secondly, say being rooted and grounded in love. He will enable you to be rooted and grounded in love. Some people are complaining now, you know, ni fair, ni fair. When you see that you don't have to let me tell you, shake your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because according to that Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18, say, be grounded and rooted in love. Verse 19 said that he may comprehend with the saint. The breadth. The breadth, the length, the height, and the depth. That ye might know the love of God that passeth all understanding. And being filled with the fullness of God. To have the fullness of God, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In first, that called First Corinthians chapter two that we read. Verse fourteen. Okay, let me read verse 15. Said, a spiritual man judges all things, but he himself is judge of no man. When you are a spiritual person, someone that you allow the Holy Spirit to control you. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The problem of the body of Christ is because we have neglected the Holy Spirit. We have entered jamboreen. We have entered entertainment. We are just entertaining ourselves. That's why sinners are not being convicted again. In John chapter 16, say, this spirit, this Holy Spirit, will convict the world of their sin. But where is that Holy Spirit in the church today? The sinners are comfortable. Even cross their leg and do Yes, they are in the church. They are not sober. But the Holy Spirit has left churches. But we are not entertaining him again. We want to do it on our own. The people of old. The people of old. Ah, God will help the, the church in the name of Jesus. Anytime I remember the church, I used to cry. Let's compare it to the old church. Times of David Brennand. Times of John Wesley. Time of Smith Wigglesworth. 
Uh, Times of Martin Luther. Times of Babalola, Apostle Babalola. Then what is happening to the church today? God will help us. When I'm in church, you are also in church, you're not the building. What is happening to us today? What is happening to us today? What is our problem? What is our problem? What is my problem? Let's think deeply. Is the Holy Spirit not alive again? Has He been adulterated? God will help us. God will help us. Amen. God will help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Discovering the mystery of the gospel through the Spirit. Yes, question four. Explain why the gospel mystery can only be discovered through the Spirit's power. How can we? Uh, why is it that it's only through the spirit that we can discover the spirit power? Let's, that is question four. We are waiting. Come and give to my brother at the front. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the natural man can never discern the things of the spirit. A natural man can never discern the things of the spirit. A natural man cannot discern the things of the spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship me must worship him in spirit and in truth. Did they Your spirit man is regenerated. From that day onward, you can communicate with God. A natural man doesn't understand the things of God. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you here and you have not given your life to Christ? You are just playing shoshi. You are just playing religion. Ah. Ah. Hmm. You will stand alone on that judgment day. Prophet Omolewa will not stand beside you. Pastor Adigun will not stand beside you. Pastor Wale will not stand beside you. Everybody will stand on their own. If you have lived your life, you will stand alone. If you live your life in the seat, you are going to stand on your own. If you have been living your life in the seat, you will stand alone. You will stand alone on that day. You will give account of your personal life. You will give account. I will give account. Nobody will give account to you. There is nobody here. That will tell me that he does not understand the truth or he does not know the truth. Then why are we not following it? Then why are we not following it? Jesus Christ said, Say ye are my brothers. Do the things of my father. Ye are my fathers. Ye are my sisters. Ye are my sisters. If you do those things, that are I command you. If you do those things, that I command you. If you do those things, that I command you. If you do those things, that I command you. If you do those things, that I when you obey, when you do his will, that is only when you can become a true son of God. Then what is our problem? What is our problem? Is it money? Is it secular thing? If you follow God, I remember when I when they say 
that God called me into full time. And I said to myself, I say, God, I, I can't waste my degree. Right for my university days. In my final year. Say, son, when you finish, you are not working. I said, ah, no, what will my parents eat? I'm not thinking about myself, I'm thinking about my parents. I said, they sent me to university. So that when I come out, I'll come and reciprocate back. Then, what would they eat? These are the questions I'm asking myself. I remember one day when I was serving. When the pastor said, everybody asked God something. I said, God, me too, I want to ask. I said, and, and I heard that voice say, You, I am your portion. I am your portion. I was plugging, I said, no, 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 no. Even though if you want me to, let me just work for 10 years. But right to today, I have seen the faithfulness of God. I'm telling you, I have seen the faithfulness of God. When I was working, what I could not acquire, I acquired it when I was working for God. I'm telling all the reality. Anytime I collect my salary when I was working then. And I remove my tithes. The next thing will be problem. And I just say, ah, my car is having problem and I have to go out. I just say, okay, take. Before I know it, all the money has gone. I can't, I can't say I'm saving for throughout my years of working. So tender, when you follow the Holy Spirit, He's going to provide for you. I, that man that came the other time, some of us that, were, that was here on Friday. He complained to that how could his family meet up. But today, but today, you can see what is happening. We have left our trust in God. I see you are the one that can do it. A business my thought is how you design your stuff or how the connection you have that can pay me for you. Let me tell you, it's not. Go can stay the heart of Jonathan. And they will come and look for you and bring it out from where you are. Then what is our problem? What is our problem? God will help us in Jesus' name. Apostle 4 divide men into three classes. The natural man. The natural man. The natural man, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Yeah, but a natural man cannot receive the things of God. Because they are foolishness unto him. Neither can it not eat. But they are spiritually designed. A natural man is an unbeliever. A natural man is an unregenerated person. And the second person he categorized is a spiritual man. A spiritual man is a man that is born again. A man that is led by the Holy Spirit. 
In that first Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. Say, he that is spiritual judges all things. But he himself is judge of no man. He judges all things because there is a power that is working in him, and that is the person of the Holy Spirit. The judgment of the Holy Spirit cannot be partial. That is what made a spiritual man. A spiritual man is a man that follows the leading and instruction of the Holy Spirit. And the third person that Apostle Paul categorized is a carnal man. Let's be very careful. There is a thin line between a carnal man and a spiritual man. A carnal man is a man that is born again. But he's been moved or is after the things of the flesh. Let's, let's, let's look at it. A carnal man is a man that is born again. But it's a man that is driven by the things of the flesh. I love Romans chapter 8. A man that is after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That is Romans chapter 8. And a man that is after the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. A man, a man, a man, a man, to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. A man, a man, a man, is enmity against God, is an enemy of God. Despite the person is born again, the God sees him as an enemy. I'm asking us this morning, are there not many enemies of God here? If you are moved by flesh, if whatever thing that you are doing is driven by flesh, I'm telling not categorically this morning that you are the enemy of God. Say, and a carnal mind is an enmity against God. Say, they that live after the flesh cannot please God. You can never please God. And according to Galatians chapter 5. Say, these are the things, these are the works of the flesh. Anger. Confessiousness, fornication, adultery, drunkard, laughiousness, maliciousness, malignity. I check the word malignity. Malignity means taking evil towards others. You call yourself a Christian and you are taking evil towards others. You are carnally driven. Maliciousness, a man that is full of malice, keeping of malice. Conversiousness. Do you know that in Colossians chapter 3, verse I say, Conversiousness is an idolatry. The day I read it, I was crying. I said, God. And I tried to check a study Bible. The conversion is the same thing as greediness. Trying to get more. You want to get more. You want to get more. You want to acquire more. You want to acquire more. You want to acquire more. Greediness. You want to acquire more. You want to accumulate more. That is conversiousness. According to Luke chapter 12 verse 15, say, take it and beware of conversiousness. Say, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Say, take it. Beware of it. 
the ability of that you ah. want to accumulate more, you want to receive more. And a man that is having this kind of lifestyle is a kind of man. And when Christ comes today, the person cannot reign with God. That is why I'm asking myself, I'm asking you. Are you an enemy of God? It's not only the devil that is enemy of God. Though. When you are driven carnally, when whatever things you are doing is in the flesh, you are an enemy of God. You are an, an enemy of God. When we get home, let's read Romans chapter 8 very well. In Romans 8 chapter 1, in Romans 8, in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, Therefore, there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation. To them that walk after the spirit. Not to them that walk after the flesh. When you are walking in the flesh, I want to tell you, according to Romans 8 chapter 1, if Christ you come, you are already condemned. You cannot reign with God. We have many kind of Christians. That was what Paul was complaining about Corinthian church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1, say, I cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, but as unto babies. What is the reason? There are divisions in their in their midst. Fornication is their midst. All sort of things is in their midst. Said and all these things, they cannot hear it the kingdom of God. If Christ should come today, I was not surprised when millions, when thousands of people gathered for a program. And God says only two or three people when he comes that will reign with him. There are many kind of Christians. Kind of Christians. In Galatians chapter 5, the last verse. Say, if ye walk according to the Spirit, or if ye walk by the leading of the spirit, they shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The only way you and I can escape carnality is by walking according to the Holy Spirit. Let's take heed. Christians, let's take heed. Don't let us be doing jamboreen. Don't let us be doing jamboreen. If Christ comes, be Christy bad day. Ha, God. God will help us in Jesus' name. God will help me in Jesus' name. Except you have another place you want to end your life. If you want to reign with Christ, you must take it. You must listen to the instructions. According to the Holy Spirit. God will help us. Amen. God will help us. Question five. With Bible reference, list various ways God revealed his mind to believers. What? What are the ways God revealed his mind to believers? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Various, various ways God reveals in his mind to believers <laughs> among God. You could see in the book of Jeremiah 33, 3, which says, God called unto me, and I will answer thee, and show it a mighty thing which thou knowest not. 
Praise God. In the next two minutes, I will be giving room to ask questions. God revealed his mind to believers through his spirit. This can come through impartation. Illumination, inspiration, interpretation, instruction, and intersection. God revealed his mind to his saints. Two, to obey his commandments. To believe in Christ as the Savior and have eternal life through his name. For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. To know God's plans and program for the saints yet and yet after. To teach our children the mind of God. This is a great privilege for Christians to have the mind of Christ revealed to them by His Spirit. Holy Spirit is our hope. Is the only one that can help us in this world. Is the only one that can make whatever he has called us to be effective. The only one that can help us to fulfill destiny and purpose. Is the only one that can help us to live a victorious life. Daily. Daily. God will help us in Jesus' name. Question. So by the time before to say, so any kawa did in motto, or what in preach, any preach me, or doing bo. So when still now, I mean, I'm it on so can you pay. Was or he was or no. I just say any any year you are alone there for a while. I just say okay, in B and E T B say was soon. Oh, you boy, say any T B and T M you are alone. So okay, so today was soon. I be back. The question of our mother is that maybe you are inside the bus and you are led. The Spirit of God inspire you to preach the gospel. And as you are praying in order to preach the gospel, somebody has already stood up. To and I started uh, preaching the gospel, and you are still led. Can you now, after the person has finished, can you now stand up? Maybe the person speaks English. Can you now stand up again and preach in Yoruba? Since it's the Holy Spirit leading you, you need to obey Him. There might be a particular word he has put in your, she has, he has put in your mind. That is different from what the person saying. As I said, to preach after the flesh is even from preaching in the spirit. I remember a case that a man of God said. Said he got to a program. They are about to round up the program just to share the grace. And all he said to him, say, son, come out. Speak this word to them. They are about to share the grace. But by his grace, the man came out. When the man delivered his message, the power of the Lord came down that all of them, they were as if they were buried. 
agbara olorun wa soro wi pe gbogbo won agbara olorun wa sele o wa so kale be pe gbogbo won o ti wa won je won je eni to ti ku they find it difficult to go home that day ojo yo wa ni won lara won da bi oku ku won ni lo le mo the power of god came down mightily and he did his work to ri pe agbara olorun so kale ni gbasi na so olorun soro o ti sise re whatever thing holy spirit put in your mind o ko ti e mi olorun ba ti fi si wa ni okan obey e je ki agbara si the more you obey bi o ba se gboro the more he use you the more you rebel, the more he withdraw himself from you. Say, how will a born again Christian know he or she is Kana? Let's open to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Set for ye are dead, and your life is hid. Is aid with Christ in God. When you see a spiritual man that is not carnally minded, he will always seek the things that is from above. Every of his taste and hunger will be from above. And everything that is called earthly will be mortified. In verse 5 of it, it says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil consequences, conversiousness, which is idolatry. Say where your treasure is, that is where your art will be. If your treasures is in heaven, your art will be in heaven. If your treasures is on earthly things, your art will be on earthly things. What is your art? Art drawn to. If your heart is continuously drawn to the things of the earth, you are a carnal man. You are a carnal man. A spiritual man seeks the things from, from that is from above. From above. From above. From above. From above. Some of us, if you don't have money, we find it difficult to come to church. You find it difficult to come to church. Let me tell you, if your heart is with God, even if you don't have money, you will come to God. There are many instances I've gone to church without offering. But my heart is with God. He knows my heart. God, you sees me. The offering I'm not giving it to any pastor. I'm giving it to you, God. Until our heart, until our mentality is changed, that whatever things you are doing as a Christian, you are not doing it for man. You are doing it for God. In your business, where you are working, you are not doing it for the boss that is paying you. You are doing it for God. According to that Colossians chapter 3, when you go down, in Ephesians chapter 5, too. 
Whatever things that you are doing in words or deed, you are doing it unto the Lord. It is God that can pay you back, not your oga or not any pastor. Until our mentality change. You are singing, you are not singing for prophet Tomolewa. You are ushering, you are not ushering for prophet Tomolewa. You are a Sunday school teacher, you are not doing for prophet Tomolewa. If he wants to reward you, how much is he going to give to you? But there is a God that can pay you and you continue to enjoy and your generation will continue to enjoy it and that is God no man can pay you I assume they will give you one million one million can disappear if God uh, blow his breeze on that one million, you discover the one million will disappear. Let them give you ten million. If it's not in the heart of God, they will fall and everything will go. Somebody for only ten million. Turn on back. Fair take us see your salary. Whatever things we are doing as a Christian, let's do it unto God. God will help us in Jesus' name. What is the remedy to revive the spirit man? What is the remedy to revive the spirit man? Are you born again? Your spirit is regenerated. But you need to continue in close fellowship and relationship with God. This can be done through baby by praying, by studying the word of God, by letting the word of God to dwell within you richly according to Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Let the word of the Lord dwell within you richly in all wisdom, admonishing ourselves in Psalms, in in aims and making melodies to your art and by praying regular prayer praising God if you have this gift of tongues pray in tongues according to Jude chapter 1 verse 20 say build up yourself on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. When you give yourself to all these things, your spirit man will be revived. It will enlarge. And you follow the instruction of God. When God speaks to your deep leader, do this, follow it. Follow what is written in His Word and gradually, gradually. I read one book by W.F. Kumui. A man that follow God who acted for a whole year said your life will change. He said it, it authoritatively in that his book. Oh. I was surprised. Said if you follow God closely, intimately, for a whole year, said your life will change. How much more someone than not follow God for eternity? Our problem is on today, of tomorrow. Today I'm on fire. Tomorrow I'm gone. You find it difficult to grow in such a situation. Today men will praise you. Then we want you follow the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, Holy Spirit will tell you when to eat and when to fast. I'm, I'm serious. Recently, there are some things you just told me. Say, son, do this, do that, do this, do that. He yeah. will tell you. 
And when I was doing it, or when I'm doing it presently, I'm seeing results. When to eat, you will tell you. When to fast, he will tell you. When to do this, he will tell you. That is when you now live a victorious life. That secret is follow him. Follow him. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. I want us to appreciate this God this morning. In any way he has spoken to you. In any way he has revealed his heart to you. I want you to go back to him. And say, Holy Spirit, help me. I want to draw closer to you. I might have been a lukewarm person. But I have come back this morning. That God should help you. That the Holy Spirit should help you. Holy Spirit should help you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we are grateful once again today. You have taught us something again that you want us to know and to abide with. Give us the grace, give us the enablement, teachable art, receptive art, to be able to do your will. Give and grant unto us in Jesus' name. As we continue in the service, continue with us. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray.